Um, so I want to I want to I want to welcome everybody, and I'm very very happy to see everyone. All the normal, uh, not normal. All the uh, I mean yes they're normal, but all the uh, <laughs> all the usual faces, usual attendees, and those who are who are here for the first time or first time in a while. Very happy to see you also. Okay, so let's get into this. Story. This this idea that I that I came to me in Likutei Halachas here. Um, it's in Hilchas Chanukah, Halacha Dalit. Totally blew my mind when I saw this. This is very, very special Torah, and um, and it's very, you know, we're we're in the we're holding in the time right now where we just came out of the month of Marcheshvin, and Marcheshvin, you know, in some ways has a lot of darkness and a lot of difficulty, and maybe you've experienced this. The last month has been difficult, and there's been a lot of ups and downs and a lot of struggles. So comes time for the month of Kislev, leading into Hanukkah. The, the lights open up a little bit and we start to see some Yeshua's and we start to see a little bit of light. So this Torah is focused, this, this uh, Likut Yalach is just focused on light. So let's say like this. This is going on the Torah in Likut Maran, Tinyana, the second section of Likut Maran, um, Halacha Samach Zayin. Beautiful, beautiful Torah over there. So the concept is like this. The introduction is, we have to think a little bit Kabbalistically, that everything in Kabbalah can be summed up in two words, really, which is oiris and kalim, lights and vessels. Light comes down, and in order for us to be able to attain this light and to be able to receive this light, it has to be first placed into vessels which can limit it a little bit, stage after stage, limiting the light. Why? Because the pure, infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so powerful and so, so all-encompassing that if we would experience that light in its pure form, it would totally, let's just say, vaporize us, wipe us out completely. We can't exist with that light, it's too powerful. So the system of Kabbalah is step after step of this light being put into kalim vessels and being reduced and filtered till it gets down to the, to the place where we're able to receive it on our own, where, where, where we are able to take it. But the power of that light, of the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is tremendous. It's tremendous. And so, Oiris and Kalim, light and vessels, is how we receive everything that we receive from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And when that light comes down, it expresses itself in different ways. So, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman brings down like this. There's two aspects of this light. One is an illumination, a light of illumination, and one is a light of fire. One illuminates and one burns. And they are, they are one against the other. In other words, you can either experience this light as an illumination that lights things up for you, or you can experience it as a fire that burns. Right? And he says that the aspect of Mo'ore Or, of the illuminating light, this is, this is the beautiful light that we can experience of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is an aspect of the holy names of Hashem. Why the holy names of Hashem? Because the holy names of Hashem are all of these revelations of that light. Every single, you know, if you come to our regular Likute Moran Shir, you'll hear about these different names of Hashem. And that they're all expressing a certain revelation of the light of Hashem in the world in a different way. Right? So those names are revealing light into the world. And, and the good kind of light. So when we connect to those names of Hashem, to the name of Hashem, we connect to the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And we light up our lives. Right? It gives us spiritual light. It gives us direction, the ability to see, to have das. And this... So connected to that, the name of Hashem, the four-letter name of Hashem, Yud and Ke, Yud and He, and Vav and He, right? Corresponding to those four letters of Hashem's name is also the human eye. Why? Because this is brought in the, in, in, in the deeper Swaram, the Zohar talks about this, that the human eye is what we see illumination with. It's what we are able to experience illumination with, with our eyes, right? And so the eye is classified as three colors, and the black pupil, which is uh, in the Lushan uh, in Aramaic, is tzlas gvanim, tzlas gvanim de'ena ubas ayin, the three colors of the eye and the pupil. So the three colors of the eye are really the white and the red from the, from the vessels in it, and then the colored part of the eye, and then you have the pupil in the middle, right? And because the eye is what receives illumination, it's connected to the four, those four aspects of the eye are connected to the four aspects of Hashem's name. The illumination comes from Hashem and we receive it through our eye in this way. And so too, Shabbos is also an aspect of this illumination. Right? How do we see this on Shabbos? 
First of all, we know that we light candles on Shabbos, and we know that Shabbos is what lights up our whole week. Shabbos is the source of blessing. Shabbos is the source of all Shefa that comes to us, is the Holy Shabbos, right? And you see also that if you look into the, into the word Shabbos, you take the shin, and the shin has three sticks to it, right? And then it has, after that, the word bas, meaning it's the three, it's corresponding to the three colors of the eye and the bas ayin, the pupil, is written into the name Shabbos. The three colors and the bas ayin, which is the name of the pupil. So Shabbos also represents illumination for us. Okay, that's the background. Everything that comes from Hashem is illumination. Everybody with me on that? The names of Hashem are illumination. So what did the Yavanim, what did the Greeks want to do? The main thing that they wanted to do, right, is lahashkicham terasech. They wanted to wipe out the Torah from, from B'nai Israel. And we know the Zohar tells us, Reb Nassim, said, Reb Nassim brings down over here, the The entire Torah is called the name of Hashem. Every single letter, every single aspect of the Torah is names of Hashem. And just like the name of Hashem is what brings light into the world, the Torah is an aspect of the revelation of this light. The Torah is what brings light into the world. It's what brings the light of Hashem into the world. Right? And the Greeks couldn't stand it. That the Torah is lighting up the world and is giving, is giving this illumination and this ruchnius and this spirituality and the connection to one Hashem. Right? So they, had, they wanted to wipe it out. So they wanted to wipe out the Torah completely. And you also see that the Torah, um, if you know a little bit of Kabbalah, also is connected to the, to the concept of four. In the earlier sections of the Kisvi Arizal, there's a, a section called the Shar HaTanta, which explains that the Torah is made up of four sections, which are Taimim Nekudois Tanta, Taimim Nekudois Tagin and Oisiris, which are the, the musical notes, the vowels, the um, crowns on the letters, and the letters themselves. There's four aspects to every Sefer Torah. And, and to how we, we relate to the Torah. And this is a very deep concept in, in Kabbalah, and they all relate to one of those letters of the name Hashem, Yud and He and Vav and He. They all relate to those aspects of the Torah. So what are we seeing here? What's the picture we're building? That everything that comes into the world from Hashem is light for us. And everything where Hashem's name is revealed, the Torah is all an illumination for us. And that's what the Greeks wanted to, wanted to wipe out. They wanted to cause us to forget the Torah. They wanted to cover up the name of Hashem and make it completely lost. They wanted to wipe out the splendor of Yisrael because the, the, us connecting to the Torah is, is, is our splendor. If we don't have Torah, we don't have, we don't have what's called Pe'er. We don't have beauty. We don't have splendor. This is what the Greeks wanted to do, God forbid. And, and it's also an aspect of... of there, there's one more aspect that we have to see for, for, for this illumination. It also says, we, we say this over and over again during Hanukkah, Vitimu kol hashmanim. They 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 tumified. They 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 what? That's the one. Thank you. They defiled all the oil of the base of mikdash, so we couldn't use it anymore. What's the base of mikdash? What's the oil in the base of mikdash? The base of mikdash was the biggest point of illumination ever in in the world. The base of mikdash was a point of of light, like ad meyor, like nothing we can ever imagine. And in the base of mikdash burned the menorah. And that menorah was the source of ruchnius for the whole entire world. And how did that menorah get, 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 get lit? How did it burn? It burned with oil. Right? So they wanted to bedavka. Why does it say they, they, they were metame all the oil? Why does that have to be the thing? Right? By Hanukkah. That they were going to be metame the oil. Because that's what burns the light. That's what brings the light into the world. And that's what our job is. And that's what they couldn't stand. That's what they wanted to wipe out was the illumination. <laughs> And also, we see that, that uh, it says in Shira Shirim, L'reach shmanecha toivim shemen, toivim shemen turak shmecha, that, that, that the, 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 the beautiful scent of the oil um, that, that was spread out from your oil. So Rashi says over there, Shem toiv nikra al shem shemen toiv. What's a shem toiv? What does it mean someone has a, someone has a good name? Why is, this, why is someone called a bal shem toiv? Right? It's connected to this concept of oil. Why? Because oil illuminates, oil lights up. And someone who has a Shem Toiv, someone who has a good name, someone who's a Baal Shem Toiv, is an illuminator and lights up the world and brings Torah into the world, brings illumination to everybody, right? This is what we do. The job of a Jew is to bring light into the world in its, in its most basic form. <sighs> right? And so, comes this time of year, and we just experienced the beginning of darkness, 
and we had a tough month, and now we're coming into Kislev, and now we're about to light it all up, and now we're understanding where this all comes from. So it goes like this. Pasuk says like this. So, Reb Nassim brings down, Ki Yashchina nikres keviyachal eish oichla. The Shechina is called by the Torah. It says in, in, uh, in Sefer Devarim, Ki Hashem Elokecha eish oichla hu. Hashem Elokecha, Hashem your God, is a consuming fire. You hear this? Hashem your God is a consuming fire. The Shechina is called an eish oichla, a consuming fire. And the Zoyar says on this, Shenikra is eish oichla, it's called a consuming fire. Why? Why is it called by that name? The achle koila vishatse koila, because it consumes everything and destroys everything. This is what it says about the Shechina, the Zoyar. You hear? Are we hearing any contradictions here? Something doesn't sound quite right, does it? So, however, Aval, says Rav Nassim, Yisrael, the Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish people, had Hadveikim Ba, that are clinging and connected to Hashem, Mekablin Chiyus Meimena, we receive life force from it. To us, it's not a consuming fire. To us, it's our life. It's what brings life to us. In what, in, in what aspect of Bechinas, like the Pasuk says, right over there in the same place in Devarim, Vatem Hadveikim Ba Hashem, you who are clinging to and connected to Hashem, Elokeichem, your God, Chaim Kulchem Hayoim. For you, it's giving you life. You're, you're, you're alive, strong, all day long. Right? This is, that's the difference. Really, the Shechina can be an Eishoi, it can be a consuming fire. But for us, when we're connected to and clinging to Hashem, it's giving us life. So, the aspect is like this. And like so many things in the world, like we've talked about many times, there is this Koyach of Eish, of Ma'ore Or, Ma'ore Eish, that comes into the world from Makarash Baruch Hu. And if we connect to it in the right way, if we connect to Hashem, and if we connect to Torah, and if we learn, and if we're you know, spreading goodness in the world, and we're doing mitzvahs, so we are connecting to that light. We're connecting to Hashem. And if we do that, then, the, then it's illumination for us. Then it's a spiritual illumination. It's clarity. It's das. It's amazing. It's emuna, Right? But if we don't, if we don't do that, if we're not connecting in the right way, and we're not making use of it in that way, then it becomes a consuming fire, right? That destroys, a literal consuming fire in the world. So what happened with the base of Mikdash, right? When everything was going the right way and we were living the lives we were supposed to be and we were doing Vaidas Hashem properly, there was light, illumination in the world. And what happened as soon as we stopped doing that? It stopped, the, it's, the illumination stopped and the base of Mikdash burned. Because if we're not bringing the illumination in, it's, it's causing fire. It's either or. It has to be one or the other. So the miracle of the Jewish people, you hear this? This is, we're getting to the end here. The miracle of the Jewish people, which is so special, is that even though Hashem is an Eish Oichla, Hashem is a consuming fire, when we cling to Hashem and we're close to Hashem, that fire of Hashem is nothing but illumination for us and gives us life and gives us Ruchnius and gives us Chius, everything we need. Right? This is our miracle. So, says Rav Nassim, what was the miracle of Hanukkah? What's so amazing about the miracle of Hanukkah in this realm? It's so amazing. It's taka so amazing. What's so amazing is that the miracle of Hanukkah was we had enough oil for how many days? For one, we had one enough day. oil for one day, one day and it burned for eight days. Right? So what happens? If you, take, uh, if you take a wick and you stick it in the thing of olive oil and you light it on fire, what happens to the oil? it gets consumed by the fire. The oil gets consumed by the fire. The miracle was that Hashem was showing us bichush, in a physical way, that this is who you are. This is who you're supposed to be. This is what the Jewish people are. You are something that connects to the fire, but doesn't get consumed. So that oil didn't get consumed. It lasted for eight days. Because when we connect to Hashem, the fire is not a consuming fire. It's just illumination. It just brightens up our lives and gives us ruchnis. You hear this? This is the miracle of Hanukkah, and this is what we can experience. So think about this. Two more points. At the, uh, the very beginning, by Avram Avinu, right? Avram Avinu is the father of the Jewish people, right? Anyone who doesn't have a, Nebuch doesn't have a father, or someone who converts, right? They're, they're a Ben Avraham. We're all Bnei Avraham, Jewish people, right? He's the father of the Jewish people. And what was one of the main tests that he went through that really solidified that aspect of him? 
was that he was thrown into the furnace, into the fiery furnace. And what happened to him? He came out on a higher level than he ever was before. Why? Because to Avram Avinu, who's so connected to Hashem, who's so atem hadveikim, he's so clinging to Hashem, that fire is not consuming. It's illumination. So he went into the fire and was not consumed. Right? Who, where else do we see this? Moshe Rabbeinu is the one who solidifies the Jewish nation. He takes us out of Egypt. He, he, he threw, Hashem takes us out of Egypt through Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is the tzaddik. Right? He's the paradigm for the tzaddik. And at the beginning of his mission, when Hashem is, is coming to him, how does Hashem, how does the Shekhinah appear to Moshe Rabbeinu? In the sneh, in the burning bush. And Moshe Rabbeinu looks at the bush and says, wow, this bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. This is the way that Hashem appears to Moshe Rabbeinu at the beginning, setting the whole stage for the rest of our history. Why? Because that's who we are. That's who we are, and that's who we're supposed to be. Right? Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is the miracle of Hanukkah, right? Right in the darkest time, everything about Hanukkah is that right in the dark, we light a fire, right? It has to be in the darkest time of the year. It has to be that you light the menorah in the lowest, like below 10 tfachim. Ideally, in Chutz Laaretz, we do it a little bit differently. But really, halakhically, it's supposed to be lit in a low place, which represents darkness also. And in those low places, we bring illumination. That's what we do. So the, uh, the word is, is that uh, we just came out of Mar Cheshven, and maybe some of us uh, struggled a little bit, and we had to get through some darkness. But now, Mamish, it's Rosh Chodesh Kislev. We're opening up the light. It's time for Hanukkah. We should all be thinking about how do we bring illumination into the world? What do we do? We connect to Torah. We co- to connect to Tzadikim. We connect to mitzvahs. We all get together, and we learn Divrei Torah together. We have amazing special guest speakers with us who are, who are bringing light into the world ad me'oid in an incredible way. So we should, we should think about from now on, from, from the beginning of Kislev, we should make an extra effort to focus on illumination and bringing every type of illumination we can into the world. And Be'ezus Hashem, this illumination of our, of our little menorahs is going to end up being the menorah in the Beis Mikdash, and we're going to see Mashiach very soon. Be'ezus Hashem.